In this presentation, we'll take a look at a donor pledge that is restricted for the use of a construction project. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're first going to take a look at our Excel worksheet to see what our objective will be. So within our Excel worksheet, we're on the sixth tab. So we're on tab six and we're taking a look at item four, which says there's a donor pledge for construction project of the 109 uh, 100 and the project life is going to be five years. Project starts two years from now. Uh, the discounted value is going to be 96160 all right so let's break this down so someone's pledging to give us money we're a, we're a charitable donation there's good we're a charity there's going to be a donation that's pledged for us they're pledging to give us 109,100, but restricting it to the use of a construction project a long-term project that's going to take five years and the project is not even scheduled to start for two years from today which means we're not going to get the pledge possibly for uh, until that time, or at least not be able to use the money until that time. And that means that uh, we, we need to discount the money that we're going to get. So we're going to put it on the books at the 109, 100. But really, by the time we get to actually get it or and or use it, it's it's going to be discounted for two years from now. So we have to use the time value of money and say, well, that means that it's not, it's not really worth 109,100 if if we're not going to get it until the future. So the present value, based on our discount rate calculation, which I'm not going to get into how to discount it, but basically, you know, we would use the present value calculation, would be the 96,160. So we want to put this on the books and we want to achieve a few different things here. We want to say, okay, this is how much they pledged for us. That's how much they say they're going to give us. We want to track that and make sure that we can we can collect on that or try to collect on it in the future for the full amount of 109,100. But we also want to show our readers at this point in time that look, it's not really worth 109,100 because we're not going to get it for a couple of years and we had to discount it. So really the value of it is only the 96,160 based on the present value calculation that we have. Uh, therefore, how are we going to do that? Let's take a look at our, our transaction down here. We want to increase the receivable by the full 109,100 because we want to be collecting from this these people right we want to collect the full amount uh, but we're only going to put it an increase to basically the the revenue with restrictions because it's restricted because they put a donor the donor put a restriction that it can't be used other than for the construction project so we're going to put it on the books but we're only going to put it on the books at the 96 160 which is the value of the donation because it's discounted so that's the only value that we're going to get and therefore the difference 12,940 the difference between the 109 100 96 160 is going to be for a discount on the contribution that's actually going to be a contra uh, asset account so if we take a look at this then that means the the ar accounts receivable is going to go up by the 109 100 and then we have this discount which is kind of like the allowance account it's going to be a discount on it we're going to say hey look we got 109 100 but really the value of it is only the net of this contra asset account which is the 96 160 and then down here we're increasing that's an increase with the credit the income by the 96 160 and also of course we want to be able to break this out because it went into the restricted items we want to break it out into the restricted items on our statement of our activities or income statement it should be going to the item with donor restrictions and then we could further break that out in our worksheet that we made in zero breaking out the types of restrictions that we have Okay, so that's a lot to it's a lot to enter here, lots of lot going on. So let's go on into let's go back to our transaction and then let's go into zero and see how this will work. So let's go back into zero here. Now we're gonna do this with like an invoice type of form, but before we do that, we're gonna need to have a category for the uh, restricted items. We have a new restricted item, which is gonna be like a long-term project. So let's first set up that category. To do that, we're gonna go to the account to the drop down up top. Uh, in the not-for-profit drop down here we're gonna go into the settings so let's go into the settings and then within the settings we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says hey you're looking for the advanced settings I'm paraphrasing and we're like yeah looking for the advanced settings so we're gonna be clicking on that and then we want to go to the tracking categories we want to be going to the tracking of the categories and then we have the unrestricted and the restricted so we're going on over to the restricted tab now we want to be on the restricted tab and I want to add a new restricted item for like a long-term project. Now, in practice, of course, we would be specific on what the long-term project was, was for. We might have multiple long-term projects. 
but I'm just going to call it generically here long term project. So we're going to say restriction long term project. You know, it'd be like a capital project, long term capital project. All right. So then I'm going to say save. So now we have an, a new category that we can then use when we create our invoice or pledge form. So now I'm going to select the drop down. I'm sorry, I'm going to go select this drop down, the little plus drop down. We're going to go into our invoice so we can record this transaction. So we'll go into our invoice. Now this is our, our modified invoice. So it says invoice up here, but we're going to make it not the standard invoice, but the pledge invoice, which means it'll say pledge on it, at least when we give it uh, to somebody. I'm going to hold down control and scroll down a bit because I think I'm, I want to get it to the 100%. That looks good. And then I'm going to say this is two. We're going to say pledger two. Now we're imagining, of course, this is the name of the person that pledged money. Pledger two. This is going to be happening, let's say, on the 7th. So I'm going to select the drop down. We're going to bring it on back to January. Bring it on back to January 7th. So January 7th, the due date then would be February 7th, we're going to say. So we'll say February 7th, although they we said the due date is, isn't going to be for... Uh, you know possibly two years until so but i'm just going to put that for the purposes of our form here and then we're going to say the the obviously again the due date was two years out so whatever the terms are that they give us they might have special or unusual terms for this particular pledge uh but i'll keep it there reference number and again we're not using the standard form i thought i changed this already it should be the pledge form so pledge form and then we're going to go down now i can use the standard pledge uh item which is going to be pledge, right? I'm going to say pledge and the standard pledge item. If I, if I choose that, we'll be going to the restricted account. So that, so it's the same pledge item here that we would use normally. Uh, however, the amount is going to be for uh, the discounted amount because this is going to be the amount that's going to be increasing income, the 96,160. So we're going to say 96,160 there nine six one six zero and then we have uh restricted so unrestricted it's going to be restricted i'm going to put it into the restricted column and we're going to say it's going to be the restricted column of the long-term project all right and then we're also going to have a discount so i'm going to just record it here dis uh discount has an i in it not an e and then the discount is going to be for the amount of that 12,940 to 12,940. So I'll say this is going to be for 12,940. And then tab, 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 tab. Now we shouldn't need an item here for or a, a class for or a classification for the unrestricted or restricted here because the discount is going to be going to a contra. Uh, a contra asset account which we're going to have to set up here so notice i put the discount it defaulted to our primary sales account the four four thousand what we want it to go to here is going to be a contra asset account which we almost certainly don't have set up at this point in time so what we want it to be is going to discount on contributions receivable let's go ahead and copy that that name see if i could put that name here it's going to be this name. I'm going to copy that. And then where do we want to put it? We want to put it on the number. Number wise, we want to put it like uh, at the 12. We'll make it uh, 1250, let's say. So I'm going to go back up top. I'm going to add a new account here. We're going to add a new account. We're going to create an account and account 1250. And then the account type. Now we can't. I'm not going to make it an accounts receivable account uh, because because this is a contra a contra account. So I've got to put it as as basically other assets. So I'm just going to call it a current asset account. So we'll say current asset type of account name. I'm going to put that long name that we had discount on contributions receivable or accounts receivable since whichever you want. And that's going to be the name. So we're going to say set that up. So there we have it. So there's where it is going. Okay, so what's this going to do now when we when we record it? Well, it's basically an invoice or pledge form. Therefore, it's going to be increasing uh, the, the accounts receivable. The accounts receivable is going to go up by the total amount, which is the 109,100. 
and then it's going to be increasing the revenue for the restricted contributions revenue kind of account which is the 96 160 for that amount and then it's going to be decreasing basically the accounts receivable with a contra with a separate account contra asset account by the 12,940. all right let's check it out so let's say approve this approve and then we got this green thing which means we did it okay i think and then so what i'm going to do is i'm going to then uh open up our reports let's let's open up the balance sheet first let's go to the accounting drop down i'm going to open up these reports these three reports and then we're going, going to go through and now analyze them actually we'll open up all four of these and then we'll go back into it so i'm going to open the balance sheet up first balance sheet open and we'll change the date up top the date being to 2020 so january 31st 2020 then i'm going to go back up top right click on that tab and duplicate that tab then go back to the tab to the left we're going to do the same thing with the income statement hitting the accounting drop down we're going to go down to the standard income statement let's first take a look at that standard income statement once open we're going to be duplicating this tab as well and then we'll come back and analyze the report so we're going to right click on the tab up top duplicate that tab then i'm going to go back to the tab to the left and let's do this again this time I'm going to our income statement worksheet going down to the income statement worksheet now we made this in a prior presentation if you weren't there for that uh you might want to go back and take a look at it it was a excellent uh, excellent time that we had there we in essence customized the income statement to break out the restricted items and the unrestricted items so we'll take a look at that then i'm going to right click on this again right click on this tab duplicate this tab and we'll do this one more time and we're going to open up going back to the tab to the left open up our accounting drop down now we want the restricted items again another custom report another great time we had putting that together in a prior presentation so if you missed that take a look at it basically we're breaking out just the restricted items for this one all right now let's analyze it if we go back to the balance sheet i'm going to hold down control scroll up to get to that one two five looks like i'm already there i want the one two five percent and we're in 2020 so that looks good so what happened here is the accounts receivable accounts receivable should be going up if i go into the accounts receivable let's see the activity so here it is and it went up for the full amount the full amount uh, of the 109 so the accounts receivable went up for that full amount 109 100 and then if i go back we had to somehow discount the fact that it's not really valued at that amount because we don't expect to be able to see it and or use it uh, until some future date so we had then our our other account which is a contra uh, a contra asset account at the 12,940 so in essence you're telling the reader hey look this is how much we expect to collect but we think the value of it is going to be reduced by the 12,940 for whatever reason in this case because of the time value of money and then so the difference between those two is what we actually expect to collect then on the other side on the income statement we're going to have the income that's going to be going into the restricted income so the restricted income should now be increasing let's go into that uh, 204 160 the 204 160 restricted income that goes up by the 96 160 which is the discounted amount the discounted value that we had due to the time value of money note that we broke out the restricted and the unrestricted in these two or three categories so the restricted category is now this 204 so if i take the 204 160 and the grants are also restricted and i and i pull up my giant calculator here and make it a little bit smaller and then say that we take the 204 160 and the 159,000. that's going to be the 363 so we broke it out in multiple accounts here uh and and then we want to see it in a side-by-side -side fashion so if i go then to the income statement uh worksheet now we have the unrestricted and then the restricted broken out into its own column now you can see this report doesn't quite tie out here because the 204 160 doesn't sum up these two accounts why because we added a new classification so we're gonna have to modify this report every time we add a new classification which doesn't happen all that often but we did here so we added a classification therefore we're going to have to customize this report we're going to go to the edit layout on the bottom left hand side we want to then go into the restricted items column restricted items column and then i'm going to move the calculator because we i want to keep that number there so i'm going to go back up top and i'm going to select the drop down here's the new item we added the long-term project so that should be included in the restricted items so then i'm going to say all right that's good let's say done 
So we have saved that, and then I'm gonna move the trusty calculator back to the right, keeping it as out of the way as possible. Scrolling back down, so there now we have the, the 363 uh, 160. So there's the 363 160 in the restricted column that, that matches the, the categories we looked at last time, which is basically this plus this, right? And then if we wanna then break out the restricted items, then we can go to the first tab, which we're gonna to have to modify again because we had we added a restricted item. So now we go here. And so now we have government uh, grants. We've got the time restriction. What we don't have is the long-term project. So I need to add another column here to tie out the long-term project. So I'm gonna say, all right, let's edit this one and add another column to it for the long-term long project restriction. So I'm gonna hold down control scroll down just a bit back down to that 100 percent we're going to be adding a column up top let's add a column it's going to be a restricted item column restricted item we're then going to select the drop down over here and i'm going to say this one's going to be for the long-term project long-term project that's the one we want and then i'm going to change the name i'm going to double click on the name i'm going to get rid of the date so we just have the name then because we don't need the date just the name and then I want to take this whole thing, grab it, and pull it to the left so the total is on the right. Because I want the total like on the far right side. So I'm going to hold this, uh, left click in it, and drag it here. So now we have the government education, the time, and then the long-term projects. So that should be good. Let's go ahead and say done on that one. Let's see what that does. Actually, I know what it's going to do. I didn't have a... In any case. But, so here we have it. So now we have the uh, government we got the time and then the long and then the long-term project now notice the total column isn't adding up these two so it's not being included in the total column over here all right so let's adjust this again i'm going to say edit this the total column needs to be adjusted so i'm going to go into the total column so remember the total column is independent of the other two now you could you could create a total column uh in, in another format which would be a formula of these two so maybe I'll take a look at that. But in any case, if I select the drop down, then I can I can create uh, another one to, to pick up the long term project. So notice the total column isn't summing up these three columns in this case. It's it's then using the restricted items. And so therefore, to double check this, you'd want to sum up this way and make sure the total column then ties out to it. Now, if you wanted to do an algebraic total column, which might be a good thing to have with our with our worksheet here then you could add another one say i want another column and i want to use formulas for the column and then i could add a formula and i'd say hey i'd like to take uh this column i'm sorry let's go back to the formula column and i'd, I'd like to say that we want to insert the government grants plus and i could use the formula here say plus and then i want to pick up the time and then i want to say plus and then i want to pick up the long-term projects and then say plus and then I and that's it that's all I want to pick up <laughs> I don't want that last plus and so that that's a way that we can have a, a total column here that's a formula so that I'll say this is total formula and that can give us kind of a double check this total column should be summing it all up and this should give us the formula so these two total columns should be the same they're calculated two different ways so let's go ahead and do that. Let's say save or done. And then if we scroll down, then now we've got uh, the, the, these items totaling up over here. So that looks correct. And again, the to these two total columns can kind of give us a double check. And that might be something we want to do on, on our other worksheet as well, because that double calculation can kind of help us. So remember, we're going to have two reports then. This report will, will be the worksheet. We'll call this restricted item uh, worksheet. And, and then we'll have another report, which will basically be the, the restricted items uh, that, that'll be our final report where we won't have the, the double check numbers over here. We'll just have the one total column. Okay, so let's save this. I'm gonna say save. So I'm gonna save this. Now I'm not gonna change the name here. I'm just gonna keep it as the restricted items. So I'm gonna keep this as restricted items. So I'm gonna say save because we, we've updated this report. Then I'm going to go to the, and, and just note that of course, this restricted item column ties out to this 363160. If I go to our income statement worksheet, that should tie out to the 363160. 
So, and here, I'm sorry, here is where we're really looking. 363160, the restricted items, then being broken out by the three restricted items within it. So let's go ahead and save this report. So I'm going to say customize. Let's save that report. And then I'm going to go back to the first tab, right click on it. I'm going to duplicate this tab, go back to the tab to the left. I just want to take a look at our custom report. So I'm going to go to the accounting drop down and just take a look at our custom reports going into our report center and then going into the custom reports, the custom reports we've been working with. So here's the two of them. Now this restricted items, I'd like to make this like, I'd like to rename it. I want to rename this. I'm going to call it restricted items worksheet. So that then we can make a final report uh, that, that, that won't have two total columns on it. So that's what we'll have. And we'll do that at a, at a later point. So now if we look at our favorite reports now, once again, we still have the balance sheet. We got the income statement. We got the income statement worksheet which breaks out restricted and unrestricted. Then we have the restricted items, which further breaks out those restricted items into the categories of restriction. And then we're gonna get one more later on, which will have the uh, unrestricted items that we'll do at a later point. That's gonna be it for now. Let's get out of here.